Hello and welcome to Getter Farms. We're here with an episode on the Farm Sim Network. We're playing on server 22, Pineapple Bay. And uh, we've been away for a little bit. Uh, we took a couple days off for the holiday. And we've got a lot of work to do on our fields. And so I thought this would be a perfect episode to talk a little bit about using uh, contracts and hired workers uh, with uh, the FarmSim network. And so when I say hired workers, I mean other players. Uh, and so I'm jumping around here a little bit on the map while I'm talking, but uh, uh, you can see here on the map I own fields 40, 42, and 44. And field 40 needs some lime. All of my fields need plowing. All of my fields need uh, fertilizer. There's no fertilization done. And uh, yeah, we're in midwinter, so I've missed planting season for canola. So I'm really just getting ready to put something else in the ground here uh, in the spring. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to plant yet, but probably corn. I've been doing a corn canola uh, cycle for a while. I might do a corn or a, a soybean uh, canola cycle just because it's faster to harvest. Um, we'll see. Either way, we got a lot of work to do. So um, the best way for us to do that is to hire out some contractors to help us out a bit. And so um, I've got a lot of equipment and so what I'm going to do is get that equipment set up where I would want it to be used for the contract ahead of time and then we'll jump out to the website and uh, talk about the different kinds of contracts, different ways you can set up contracts and uh, dive into that in a little bit more detail. Uh, but one of my biggest tips for um, using contracts is to uh, be very explicit on what you want done uh, and part of that is uh, you know telling them what equipment to use on what field and in my experience uh, you know your equipment better than any contractor coming in to your farm is going to know it and so it always helps to set your equipment up where you want them to run the contract if possible um, at least in my experience and so in this case, I want somebody to come and plow field 42. And so I'm just going to put my 9RT with the plow attached so that when I create the contract, I'm going to have a really easy time of explaining exactly what piece of equipment they should use uh, because it's already set up on the field and ready to go. Uh, the other job that we need to do is lime field 40 here across the road. And so... Uh, earlier, I've got all of these storage bins, so I already went and got some lime, filled it up, brought it out here, and I'm going to be able to um, just uh, bring this over here and have them uh, come lime the field. In this case, uh, because lime does get used up fast, it should have enough lime in this uh 4045 spreader to do this field but just in case I'll be able to explain that if they run out I have some extra in the storage bins uh, across the road here and so those are the two jobs that I want to create contracts for to start with and so now that I've got the equipment all set up and ready to go I check that they're fueled they're repaired things like that um, I can jump out to the web page and set up the contracts. So let's go ahead and jump out there and talk about different the different uh, ways you can use contracts. So here we are out in the uh, FSN webpage, and we're just going to go up here to Interactions and select Contract Center. And we're in uh, what are we in midwinter? So there's not a lot of contracts uh, out right now so hopefully we're going to be able to get somebody to pick this contract up even though it's pretty late um, there's so many players playing fsn now that uh, we've got pretty good coverage so there's usually contractors up at all hours doing some uh, different work when i talk about having hired workers help you out on your farm as a farm manager there's really three different methods for that that come to mind the first is uh, creating a contract 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and put in my description here uh, for what I want them to do. I'm gonna try to be as detailed as possible, um, saying what tractor I want and the, the plow that's attached to it on field 42 to plow, return to the north side of field 42 where other equipment is parked when finished, uh, just so that they know where to leave it. So there's two different kinds of contracts that you can put up. The first type that I'm gonna talk about is hourly pay rate, which is uh, exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna pay a certain number of dollars per hour uh, for a contractor to come and do um, a piece of work for you. And generally, I recommend not using uh, this kind of contract. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, so in this example, I'm asking somebody to come in and plow field 42. Well, this is my farm, my equipment. I know how long it takes to plow field 42. I know it's going to take less than an hour to plow field 42 with this equipment. It's probably going to take, you know, somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes to plow um, field 42. And so if I put in an hourly pay rate, uh, the minimum is the a minimum amount of time that somebody's going to bill me for is an hour. And so if it's a short job, I don't want to pay, you know, for a full hour. And if I put in a low hourly rate, it's going to look bad out on the, um, you know, main screen when people are looking at contracts. Plus, I'm accepting all of the risk of if somebody takes this contract and then you know has some issues or doesn't know how to complete their contract on time they could take you know two or three hours uh, before they end this contract I'm on the hook to uh, pay for you know all of that time that they spent and you know there's systems in place that if somebody's you know abusing this you can put a ticket in uh, for the staff to take a look at it um, but that's just a lot of hassle and you know, generally that's where the straight pay option comes in, where I know this job is gonna take less than an hour. And so I'm gonna say you know, what I'm willing to pay for somebody to come in and do this work for me. And so I know that this is gonna take less than an hour. And generally, you know, the going rate, hourly rate for contractors varies in FSN, and I've been away for a few weeks. So I don't actually know what the current rate is, but in my experience, um, you know, four to five thousand dollars an hour is usually a pretty good rate uh, from a contract perspective. And you know, for the purposes of uh, this video, I really want this job to get done. And so I'm going to say I'm willing to pay five thousand um, dollars straight pay to have somebody come in and plow this field. And so I'm using uh, this. I usually like to also put in the description of my jobs. Um, this job should take um, 30 to 45 minutes. That way when somebody's taking my contract, they know uh, what to expect, right? Am I getting into a two hour job? Is this a, you know, or is this something quick? Uh, and so this should give them a pretty good, and in fact, it's a plowing job. Plowing's kind of slow. I'm just gonna, you know, uh, say, you know, 45 minutes to clearly set their expectations coming into this. Um, this is something, you know, that I have found helps my contracts get uh, accepted, you know, fairly regularly. If I'm looking at some of these other fields in here as well, number of hours to accept. So how long do I want this contract to be posted before it um, cancels itself out and I need to repost it? Uh, if you don't put a number in here, it's pretty short. I forget what the time is, uh, but it's probably like one hour. Um, so. I usually put a few hours in here, especially if I'm up late at night. Uh, I'm not really in a hurry to get this done, and so I'm going to say four hours. Um, so if somebody doesn't take this job in the next four hours, this contract will um, expire. And then you can also set, if you, if you want to know that you're getting an experienced player to do a job, you can say, I only want somebody who's done X number of jobs for different players. Or um, if you're trying to set up a contract for somebody who's already done some work for you, you can say that you want to um, have a minimum number of jobs that they've done for my farm already. I'm not really that picky about it, so I'm not going to put anything there. 
And then you can also set things up so that only farm managers or only contractors can use them. I'm also not that picky here, so I'm gonna leave that open uh, to everybody. And I'm gonna go ahead and post this contract. And now, if I go back to the contracts home page, I can see my own contract here uh, for $5,000 for somebody to come in and plow field 42. I can click the details link and you know get the description here uh, and kind of see how that compares. You can see up here compared to uh, somebody else uh, has an hourly job posted here for $3,000 an hour. Uh, and so, you know, I'm definitely ahead of the um, average for hourly rate, you know, comparing to uh, that. So we're going to go ahead and toss our other contract in here real quick. And then I'll talk about the third type of uh, approach you can use for hired workers. So we're just gonna put the details in here real quick. We're liming on Pineapple Bay, field 40. Use the John Deere 4045. Uh, if you run out, there's more there. This job should take under 30 minutes. And so we're gonna um, bump the pay down a little bit on this contract, uh, just because I know this goes really fast with the uh, 4045, that's a pretty fast spreader. Uh, I'm going to do the same four hours and no restrictions on the rest of these. So I've got two contracts out here and posted. If I come back out to the contract center, now I can see uh, both of my contracts that are posted. And so at some point, um, these are going to get accepted. Somebody's going to come in and do that work. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, that'll happen uh, while we're still recording here. And uh, we can take a look at how closing out those contracts works. The third way to handle um, hired work is actually uh, to use a, another player that you um, know. I would recommend you know you, you, somebody that you trust, and they can do the work for you and then invoice you for their time and materials spent. And so a lot of times um, you do this with either um, somebody that you, you trust pretty well uh, regular workers, if you've got, you know, a, a lot of farm managers have like a work list and they have a, a set of people that are doing all of the different things around the farm that need to be done based on that list. And then they just um, invoice back out to um, another player. And so you can see here, I've got a lot of invoices here. And so if I look at uh, my invoice list here, CK Farming, uh, he is another uh, farm manager on my server, and he helps me out from time to time. And so um, I needed a couple of jobs done, and he was kind enough to help me out. And then he, we were just on and playing, and you know it was some odd jobs, so I didn't have time to create a contract at the moment. And so we agreed he would just invoice me when he finished up the work. And so he did three hours of work for me at 3k an hour and invoice me for that work afterwards and then I was able to pay that invoice uh, and so this is really handy when you have a less formal less structured um, set of work that needs to be done or you're working with another farm manager on the map and maybe they're going to use their own equipment or uh, some of their own supplies and you need to pay them back for you know the materials that they've used. Um, this can be another method for uh, engaging with contractors or uh, farm managers to get work done. Um, but really, I strongly recommend using the contract system because that's what it was built for. And it's a great way to keep track of, you know, the specific jobs that you're doing and to be very crystal clear on what it is that you need to have done, uh, what field it is, and all of those items. That's all for today, Ketterk.